Hello again, y'all. So, we are going to try something, and I'm going to let y'all follow me on it, because this has been in my head for a little bit now, and it's time to let it out. So, this is kind of my creation, and you always know, sometimes it looks better in your head than when you get it out on your rod blanket, and it looks so good, and sometimes it looks pretty good in your head, and then when you get it out on your rod blanket, it looks a whole lot better. So this I'm gonna be calling the um, messy thread marbling. And the idea or the concept I had in my head was, what if you just kind of block off little sections and just kind of put some colors in there? Uh, and I'm gonna show you what I mean. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get me a piece of tape. And like I said, this is gonna be messy because that's kind of the effect I was going for. So I'm just going to take a piece of nylon thread. And I'm going to turn around and put this band over the um, pulley down here. Just kind of tighten this up just a little bit. And uh, what I'm using nylon size a i'd rather have size d because i feel like it, it it would block the um marbling from wandering off further than i want it to but this is nylon i'm not going to use color preserver on this and i'm just going to turn around and make all sorts of these crazy little sorry i don't mean to bump it Like I said, I'm not too interested in how this goes. I'm not doing any uh, patterns to speak of. I'm just throwing it on here. I want to keep it kind of tight because I want it to stay still. And I got a flaw in my little wooden dowel here. I take these wooden dowels and I paint them black. and uh, try to make it smooth, but it don't always end up smooth. You see, I sectioned off a little area leave myself plenty of room to make all these weird little things here. Let's see. Maybe I can go across like this. I don't know how many of these little triangles or shapes I'm going to make in here. Just kind of like I said See if I can pin that down a little bit. Like I said, no pattern, just goofing off. I don't want to make too many big sections. There's something right there I want to cover up. There's a section right there. It's a little bit bigger than I want, so I got to come back across and I think that's good enough. Let me see. 
Yeah. I might move it around with my pick. So all I'm gonna do, got all these weird little geometric designs here, or shapes. I'm gonna tape this off. I might move it around with my pick a little bit. But what I'm gonna do, and I'm not gonna make y'all sit here and watch me do it, but I'm gonna put a light coat of um, epoxy on here. And then I'm gonna mix up my, um, my colors. I'm going to do four colors on this, and I'll, I'll tell y'all what the colors are going to be. Y'all stand by. I'll be right back. Okay, the pigments I'm going to use on this is going to be Burlesque, and these are all pigments by Nuno's, and he's got some pretty cool names for his colors and pigments, his marbling pigments. Bumblebee, Blue Lightning, and Lime. Okay, so the first two colors I'm going to start with is the Blue Lightning and the Bumblebee. And if, ouch. I'm going to use a needle. And this needle is a pretty good size needle. I don't want to use a toothpick because I want a fine point. And besides that, I've been wanting to try it with a needle anyway. Now, I always have a napkin in my hand so I can wipe off the needle because or whatever you use using, needle, toothpick, whatever. And, um, so if you don't want a whole lot of pigment, or if you're just trying for a little bit of pigment, but see, I'm not putting a whole lot on here. And I'm just going to pick a corner. This might be a little harder than I thought. Here, we're going to do something different. I'm going to turn this off. And I'm just going to turn it by hand. That way I have a little bit more control over it. And I can... I don't mean to keep bumping y'all. So what I'm going to do... Is just try to add like in the corners... And maybe kind of go along the line with the uh, thread. There we go. Like I said, this is the first time trying this. Get me a dot going on the corners. go this way and I'm just gonna kind of like when you're coloring in a coloring book just kind of stay in the lines and hopefully if this does like it's it did in my head <laughs> We might come up with a cool design. I'm going to get some color on. And then I will be back. I'm not going to make y'all sit here and watch me. So I'll be back here in just a little bit. And tell y'all what I did.
not exactly the effect I was going for. It doesn't look awful. But I think what I'm going to do, though, is come back and maybe put some um, gold in between the different colors to kind of give it a stained glass effect. We'll see. Y'all stay tuned. This one's going to be a puzzle to me. All right, y'all. So my messy thread marbling turned out to be a little bit more messier than I was planning. So I'm going to have to uh, do some rethinking on this. But before I go to show y'all what my idea is to fix up the oops, I'm going to um, tell you about this thing right here. I got this from, I want to say mud hole, and it comes in really handy. Let me see if I can zoom out. Nope. To prop your hand on for painting or doing something tedious. And it's, what's cool about it is, like I said, you can prop your hand on it. You can raise it, lower it here. You can adjust it inward to closer to your work or outward for like maybe your wrist like today what I'm going to be using it for is I'm going to be painting in gold using testers paint in this fine ah, super fine let me see how fine it is how small the brush is paintbrush now I'm going to get set up and I'm going to come back but let me see if I can move this so I can kind of show you before I pause this video making. When I put the thread on, I was hoping it was going to go closer to the thread, which, you know, when you put the epoxy on it, it made the thread disappear anyway which it did that I was expecting that and, and it kind of did in a way because it gave me some fine lines on some of these things some of these little shapes geometric shapes or whatever you want to call them messed up triangles so it kind of did what I wanted it to but not exactly the way it was in my head but like I said at the beginning of the video Sometimes it'll come out the way you want it. Sometimes it won't. But it did give me another idea, something I've been wanting to try. And that was to try to figure out how to put gold, real, as metallic-y looking gold as I could think of, on a rod. Because I like doing, oh, let me see, like, quartz marbling designs, something that looks close to quartz, something that looks, my most favorite is like a gate types of rocks where it's got these veins of different colors through it and this, that, and the other, so I don't know, it's going to give me an idea, something to try, so let me get set up for this and I will be back and we will see how good my idea turns out. Okay, here we go. Keep your fingers crossed. Ooh. Kind of cool, kind of cool. Alright, I'm going to go through this whole thing, cover all these spots that I want to cover, and then I'll come back and show y'all after it's all been done. Okay, I'm back. So, I went through the whole thing, put my gold down with the uh, tester's gold and a fine brush, and I went ahead and put uh, black trim bands with a little bit of Electra 
metallic and it's 9008 and for some reason I guess you just can't even find it anymore but um, I looked to try to get the name of the it's a purple but I didn't go real fancy with the trim bands. It's just something to hold it. I don't know. Trim it out. But I need to go back and pack it in a little bit and smooth it out a little. But y'all stay tuned and I will come back after I get a coat of epoxy on it. Okay, so... This is one coat, one coat only. I hadn't sanded anything out because of it. Remember, this is just like a test thing. Some testing out an idea that I had. So I put it on a, a, a dowel, my little test rod practice, whatever. You got an idea, put it on something. So that's what I did. But even though this didn't exactly turn out the way I had in my head I learned some stuff and that's what's cool when you go to try to do something that you want to try to see okay how's this going to turn out is this going to work is this not going to work you learn things one of the things I learned was if uh, you put thread on a broad blank and messy triangles and then your marbling wanders off where it's not supposed to wander off. You can put gold testers paint on it. But another thing I learned with that is I really need a, a finer brush. And I mean, that, that brush was fine that I used. But if it was longer bristles and still fine, it would have been a little bit more easier to control and a little bit easier to load up. But I mean, it, it, it didn't turn out awful. It, it gave me some ideas of some other things I want to try. Which, one thing leads to another, right? And let's see, what else do I want to point out? Oh, if you go through here and you see how it's lumpy, and, and this is one coat. When you're putting... Um, I didn't put too much marbling on this. I did put too much epoxy on this at one time. You don't really want to load up your epoxy all at once. I, I guess I had in my head I wanted to get it done, so that's where I messed up. That's what happens when you rush. But I'm, I'll, it made me think of something else was, if you're doing some marbling, and you want to put all these colors on there. If you overload and put too many colors, it's going to it's going to bump up. And the thing about marbling is is, you know, if it's just a plain blank and you don't have anything underneath and no colors and no marbling or whatever, if it bumps up on you, you can sand it down and smooth it out. Well, if you go to try to do that with marbling, you're going to get rid of the color you just put on there. So, you just, you don't want to put too many colors, and you don't want it to get too thick. Because if it gets too thick, it's going to bump up on you. Make little bumps and valleys and ridges and ugh. Which I did. But again, I can probably sand down that, because what's bumping up on me was that my epoxy kind of got too thick on me too fast. And that's probably because I wandered off doing other stuff and let it get too thick before I was trying to lay it down. And on top of that, I put too much on at one time because I was in a hurry. But anyway, I, I learned some stuff with it. I it did give me an idea of uh, something else I want to try. And I got plenty of spaces left on this, rock, um, this practice dowel. But... It's just fun to play around, learn stuff. But anyway, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned some lessons like I learned some lessons because I learned a bunch of lessons. Y'all take care. Tight lines. Y'all don't forget to subscribe. Keep an eye out on our channel because I'm going to keep on doing some more videos. I got some other things in mind that I want to share with y'all. So y'all take care. 
See you later.